And this edition of the Fun Astrology Podcast is brought to you by The Book of the Moon, written by the brilliant author Stephen Forrest. Everybody says, I love his writing style. Pick it up from Amazon.com and you don't need a subscription to Audible or Apple Books. Well, we are counting down May now, aren't we? It's the 28th. Hi, everybody. Thomas Miller on the Fun Astrology Podcast. Thank you so much for listening today. As promised yesterday, we're going to drill down on Jupiter now in Gemini, which happened Saturday night. There are no direct aspects in the sky today. The one that we'll be looking toward tomorrow, we'll talk about tomorrow. That's Mars conjoining Chiron, which happens at 1.08 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. But today we're going to focus on Jupiter in Gemini. A couple of chart structural things. First of all, the Sun is at 7 degrees Gemini today, Venus is at 5 degrees, and now Jupiter is at 0 degrees. That little bunch, now that they are in Gemini, are in a pure air sign trine to Pluto in Aquarius. Everybody you talk to feels that there is this shift going on. Things are not normal. We know that times are changing. We just don't know exactly how or where. There are two big major conflicts going on in the world. We have major elections going on in the United States and in the UK. And now, as of Saturday, when Jupiter entered Gemini, we have the two benefics, Jupiter and Venus, and the Sun, all in Gemini. Now, I both love and respect Gemini, because I'm a Gemini rising. I'm talking to you because of that Gemini rising. My little Scorpio sun would still be under the bed, hiding in your shoe. But my, but my Gemini rising has me in here talking to you behind a microphone. The sign of communication. Everything Mercury. Everything third house. Travel. Neighbors. Siblings. Etc. Etc. But there's one thing about Gemini you have to keep in mind whenever it comes up. However it comes up. And you also have to put a bracket around Sagittarius and Pisces as well in this regard. Those are the three signs of the zodiac that are divided signs. Gemini, the twins, Pisces, two fish swimming in different directions, Sagittarius, the centaur archer, half man, half animal. So whenever you have planets in these signs or anything going on with these signs, like a rising sign, you have to think of divisions. You have to think of plurality. You have to look at not one thing, but ask, what else is going on here? And one theme you see going on around the world in that list of things that I mentioned is division. And I don't know how that's going to play out with this Pluto trine. It's a favorable aspect, but it's almost like Pluto has been waiting for these three and Mercury on Monday to get in here. And this is yet a different relationship than when all these planets were back in Taurus. That was a tense square. This is a trine. What will play out? Now, Venus moves through very fast. Mercury is on a very fast track. It's only going to be in there for 14 days. Shoom! (laughs) It's like that. So it goes in on the 3rd and out on the 17th. Venus also leaves on the 17th, and the Sun leaves on the 20th. So two will be in Cancer, the Sun and Venus, and Jupiter will be left behind until June of next year. And that really, you know, we talked about the bundle breaking up, this bundle, this tight group of planets, this energy that all of us have been just like, wow, well, that's when it really starts to break up. So we have a couple of cool things in the chart today. Let's celebrate. First would be the oracle planet, the one that comes up into the horizon before the sun. That's Venus right now. Stays that way all the way until Wednesday of next week. So that's like sprinkling Venusian pixie dust on our day. Love and peace to you and you and you. Find harmony, find balance, find something or someone you love. Say I love you to people today. The energy is there. And then not only do we have this trine to Pluto, we have a kite formation in the chart. And that means the formation that looks like a kite. So on one side is Jupiter, Venus, the sun. On the other side, cross beam of the kite, that's Pluto over there. And then up at the top of our little kite is Neptune. And at the bottom of the kite is the south node of the moon. Absolutely awesome two-part series just released over the weekend, by the way, on Old Soul, New Soul, about the nodes of the moon. So if you've been confused about the interpretation, hopefully 
this works some of that confusion out. But I saw a tweet over the weekend, and, you know, <laughs> I have no idea now, when you look at anything on social media, if, if there's any truth at all. But supposedly at NORWAC, the big astrology conference over the weekend, Demetra George, who is one of the goddesses of astrology, was quoted on this Twitter post of saying, we're going to set the North Node of the Moon aside because I don't understand the North Node of the Moon. <laughs> it's like somebody said, I feel vindicated. Well, I think we answered it in that episode, those two episodes. I really do. I think we expanded it to a point where you can kind of wrap your little brain around it. But the South Node of the Moon is in our kite today. So this is a theme of karmic transformation, no doubt about it, however you view the nodes. Neptune is up at the top. That makes it a peak pinnacle focus. This is about spirituality. Pluto's role is transformation, but it's in a trine, so it's favorable. It wants to work positively. Let go. Don't resist. And I'll tell you, I love these little symbolisms in the sky. When you pick up on them, it's just so cool and so beautiful. Like we talked about yesterday, this renewing of the mind, the karmic mind with Saturn's aspect yesterday and Uranus on Friday and uh, renewing our purpose and then renewing our spiritual mind on Sunday. Talked about all that yesterday. And now here, back to Neptune again, it's like this big arrow in the sky pointing us to the home office, pointing us to higher source under this massive, really positive, transformational configuration that's in the sky right now. So Jupiter is in Gemini until June of next year. Last time, if you want to go back in the annals of your mind and remember what happened the last couple of times it was there, June of 2012 to June of 2013. Go back to the year 2000, June of 2000, July of 2001. See if anything significant happened during those times. Let's go back a couple of more. 1988, that was July, late July through August of 1989. That was a big period. The Solidarity, uh, Lech Walesa, won the election in Poland, and the Berlin Wall came down, and the Soviets pulled out of Afghanistan, all during that Jupiter through Gemini transit. So you can see that there's there's not a direct correlation with big things that I could find, but I definitely think it would be worth going back and looking because, like in my own life, okay, Gemini Rising, that last one, 2012 to 2013, that was when all of my work that you hear now, the audiobooks, the podcasts, all of that launched inside that window. So we have a great positive aspect in the sky today. Let's just enjoy it. This is a lucky week. Catch the Lucky Stars Club. If you'd like to be in on the video, you'll get it uh, just sent right to your email if you go over and join at the top of the funastrology.com website because this is the, the most lucky week, according to Kristen's formula, of the whole month. So it's worth checking out. Have a great one. I love you. We'll see you back tomorrow for Hump Day. Got a Chiron aspect in there tomorrow.